Welcome back. In this video, we're going to show you how to use reverb in Pro Tools. Very easy to do. A couple of different ways to do it. I have a drum loop that I've put in here, and this is one of the um, drum loops that is available with Pro Tools. So it's a stock sound here. Let's give it a listen. All right, straight ahead. Sounds good. I like it. Um, one way to put reverb on a instrument or a track is to put it directly on the track that we're on. So I'm going to tighten up this view here. So uh, this loop is here. I'm going to put a reverb plugin right on the track. We'll go reverb and I'm going to use the stock D-verb. This applies to any reverb that you want to use, not only the, the stock Pro Tools D-verb, but any other avid or non-avid reverb put the plug-in right on the track now right now the reverb by default is set to hundred percent wet signal which means we're gonna have a lot of reverb on this let's listen to it yeah we're kinda swimming in reverb right now so I wanna back down this dry wet level right and I'm kinda balancing out the drum uh, loop audio with the reverb level. I want to make it kind of balance out. Now if I take that the, all the way to the left to the dry, that's zero reverb. All the way to the right is 100% wet reverb. So I don't know, I'm going to put it right around, let's say 30% or so. And I'll bypass the reverb, see what that sounds like. Now you notice this a little bit of a dip in volume, so I'm going to take the gain up all the way up to zero so that when I bypass it the gain's pretty much the same. I got 20%, 29% reverb. I'm going to give it a little bit more. Now of course I'm using the default setting here, hall, large hall. I can do a variety of different tweaks in here. Kind of like that kind of depends on what you're going for. Now remember you're using a reverb to emulate a room or a space. It could be uh, like you see here in the reverb plug-in, a hall, a church, a room, a small room, a medium-sized room. You're emulating what a room might sound like and you're putting that instrument, in this case drums, into that room. Now this is the first method of putting reverb on a track. I put a reverb plug-in directly on the audio track and I reduced the dry wet mix down to about 36 percent. You can put that level whatever you want. It's to your taste. Another way to do a reverb is to use what we call a send return routing configuration. That's a long way to explain it. I know I'm going to take this reverb off no insert and I'm going to create a stereo aux track so this is stereo aux input and I'm going to name it reverb and on that stereo aux reverb track I'm going to put the same dverb plugin there it is it looks exactly the same now in this instance the reverb lives on a reverb aux track it does not live on the drums track which is where i want the reverb to go but i'm going to use a send so i'm going to create a send and i'm going to choose a bus i'm just going to choose one and two any available send that you have is fine and uh, i'm going to right click on it and rename it reverb uh, you know what, I'm going to name it Reverb Bus to make it clear. Because we're bussing this signal over to the reverb. Now the input of this reverb stereo aux track that I just created is going to be that same bus. So I'm going to go to Bus, Reverb Bus. Now, if I command click on this little button to the left of the send there, it will expand that send so that I can see the fader there or you can also get to it by going to the view menu and going to expanded sends and you'll see that send A is expanded I'll turn that off do the same thing here expanded sends so I can show you how to give you the expanded view now as I I'm going to solo up the reverb as well as I increase the gain on that send it's going to send this drum signal to the reverb aux track which has the reverb plugin on it and we will be getting reverb coming back into the session through that reverb aux track let's give it a listen 
So no reverb yet. I'm going to turn this up. Well, there's a lot of reverb. I'm going to take it back down. The cool thing about this is that it allows you to easily adjust how much reverb. You're actually adjusting how much of the drum loop you're sending to the reverb, but the result is, what you're hearing, is more or less reverb on those drums. Now, that's a single reverb plugin that I'm using on a stereo aux track. The cool thing about this is, as I add more tracks, I can easily include them into this routing configuration. And let's do that right now. So I'm gonna go over, I've got a drum, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a percussion loop here. We'll solo that, solo that up as well. And let's give it a listen by itself first. Get rid of the click track. Right, it's a dry percussion loop. It's nice, fits in there. All right, so I wanna add reverb to it as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing. The send on that loop track, I'm going to use the same bus, reverb bus. Turn the gain up on that send. Oops, I gotta solo the reverb as well. You know what, I'm gonna solo safe that reverb. I'm gonna command click on it on a Mac or control click on it on a PC. Okay, so now I have not only the drums with reverb, but I also have the percussion loop going to the same reverb. Let me get rid of that. So I'll mute the uh, percussion. And then I'll mute the drums. They're both getting reverb. And you know what? I need a little cowbell. Yes. Now here's another trick. So I have the cowbell track. I'm going to solo that up as well. And instead of creating a new send, I'm just going to option click and drag from one of the existing sends. On a Mac, it's option click and drag. On a PC, it's alt click and drag. And it will duplicate that bus or that send routed to that bus at the same level. So now if I listen to the cowbell, it's got reverb as well. We'll bring them all in. And what else do I have in here? This is boom. This is another drum loop. And just for the sake of adding everything in there, let's solo this up. I want to put a little reverb on this as well. So I'm going to option click and drag this reverb send over to this track as well. So the advantages of this are a few. Number one, I'm using one reverb plugin and I'm applying it to four different tracks. I have the ability to adjust the level of each of those four tracks going to the reverb, so they're not all stuck with the same reverb amount, which is good. Using one reverb instead of having a reverb on each of those four tracks is using my system resources much more wisely. Reverbs can be very taxing to your computer. They're doing a whole lot of things, especially if you have, you're using a really long reverb, a reverb tail that's very long. It's gonna be more taxing to your system. So if I were to put four rever reverbs on here, my computer's gonna be working a lot harder. So I'm, I'm using my resources more effectively. And lastly, I think is, if this is what you're going for, let's say vocals, for example. I have four vocalists that I want to put reverb on. If I use a send return config like we are here, I'm putting all four of those vocalists in the same reverb or in the same room. And normally that's a natural thing. They're singing in the same room. They're going to have the same room sound or same reverb from that room. So to me, it's it's a little more of a natural setting to send multiple vocalists, for example, or it could be drums, whatever it is, into a single reverb. Now, of course, you can 
send each one to a different reverb or you can put a reverb on each track whatever sound you're going for is totally okay but those are my reasons to do um my suggestions to use a send return config in pro tools for reverb same thing applies to delay by the way so there you have it